Hello and welcome to another video. This is the first in the series of integration for the second year of the A-level maths. What this video is going to be looking at is sort of how integration can be used as a, in place of the limit of a summation. So the key thing to think about with this is what's the point of integration? Or what's one of the reasons we integrate? Well, it's to find areas. So if we have this area here, we want to find the area, but maybe we don't know what this function is. Maybe we can't integrate it. So we need to find another way to find this area or an approximate way to find this area. Now we're going to look at one way to do that at uh, uh, in one of the later topics. But for now, what we're going to look at is approximating. So we could approximate this area in a bunch of different ways. But let's think about the easiest shape to work out. So we want to work out the area of this. The easiest shape to work out the area of is a rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about splitting this up, this area, into lots of different rectangles. So let's think about this rectangle here. Now I know I've not drawn it quite up to the top. That should be there, but there we go. So I'm taking this rectangle at the point P. Okay, this, the, this point P has any coordinates we like. So it has coordinates X, Y. But what's the Y coordinate? Well, Y equals F of X. Now, so th this is X. What we're going to say is that this is X a little bit further on. Now, this idea of a little bit further on is something we've seen in proof uh, in differentiation from first principles. But we're going to write this slightly differently. We're not going to say that this is x and this is x plus h, where this h is a difference. What we're going to say is this distance here is delta x. And we're using the lowercase delta, which looks like a kind of more rounded, more curvy d. So, what is the area of this rectangle? Well, we know it's base times height, because that's the area of a rectangle. So, what is the base? Well, the base is this delta x. And the height, well, the height is this. Which is the y coordinate. So it's delta x times f of x, which I'm just going to write the other way around. So what do we do now? Well, we've got lots of these rectangles. So this area here, we're going to work out the total area is going to be the sum of all of these rectangles. OK. Now we have a start point A, so we're going to sum from X is A up to X is B. And this is how we work out the area. But where does integration come in? Well, this is only an approximation. And for this curve that I've drawn here, it's going to be an under approximation because, well, you can see for all of my rectangles, which are all the same distance apart, they're just different heights. For all of my rectangles, you can see there's a little bit missing. We've got this little bit missing here. So what could we do to improve our approximation?
So obviously we could use different shapes and that's something that we'll look at later on using not a rectangle, using something different. But what's another way still using this, this shape that's easy to work out the area of? Well, let's have a think. If we've got this shape here and we only use one rectangle to approximate it, that's not a particularly good approximation, is it? But what if we take the same shape, or as best I can draw the same shape, and use two rectangles? You can see the amount that we're approximating that's wrong is slightly less because we've got this smaller area underneath here and a little bit over the top so we're going to take off this bit as well so to improve and to improve our approximation we use more strips use more rectangles well what does this mean for our delta h which means delta sorry delta x gets smaller you don't if you don't kind of can't can't see that let's assume for the sake of argument that this distance is 1 so we've used one rectangle here we've used two rectangle rectangles and they're the same width so each of these is a half if we use more smaller rectangles maybe it'll be a quarter so our the width of our rectangle is getting smaller every time so delta x gets smaller so how do we get a perfect area well if we have we've taken our rectangles and we've made them half as big we make them half as big again, then again, then again, then again. The rectangles are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Which means we're going to make delta x tend to zero. By doing that, we make the rectangles very, very thin. So thin that they're effectively a line. We stack a bunch of lines next to next to each other, we're going to get the areas are going to be perfectly representing this curve. And that's where integration comes in. So integration, so if we have the integration between a and b of some function with respect to x, we know that this is the area. Okay, we did that in the first year of maths, so that hopefully should be a nice, very familiar thing to talk about. So what we're doing is we're taking this sum, we're taking this sum, and we're making the area for, we've got f of x, delta x okay and we're taking the limit as delta x tends to zero and that's where integration comes from as an area the thing with this in terms of practically in the exam you don't need to know all of the reason behind it what you need to know is that this is the same as this so we're going to look at an example to show you kind of what's going on with that. So we can see we've got this question here. So we've got the graph showing a sketch of this curve with equation y equals 2 root x. The point p x y lies on the curve. The rectangle shown shaded has height y and width delta x. Calculate this. So this was from one of the exams. And if you didn't recognize, oh, this is an area, 
and I'm doing lots of areas added together to make this big area, well, this must be integration. It was a very hard question to do, but that's the point of it. You needed to recognize that the limit of delta x tends to zero of the sum between x is four and nine of two root x delta x is the same as the integral between four and nine of two root x dx. From there, this is a relatively straightforward integration question. So increase the power by one, divide by the new power. So we've got x to the three over two, divide by the new power. So 4 over 3, 9 to the 3 over 2, minus 4 over 3, 4 to the 3 over 2. Which if we just stick in our calculator, we get the right answer. So we've got 4 thirds, 9 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Obviously, looking at the way I've typed it in my calculator, it's not quite this. I've just factorized. That's fine. And we get 76 over 3. And that's what you need to worry about in terms of this idea here, is that these are identical things. Now, there isn't any practice of this specific relationship in the textbook, or at least not in the Pearson textbook, but that's all it is. It's just knowing that this is the same as this. Once you've got that, it's just normal integration. So hopefully that should be fine. Thank you for watching.